Hey guys, it's Alex. And today what we're going to do is we're going to show you what a remote dyno session is like. Nine times out of 10, a lot of people do most of their data logging on the street. Now, why is that? It's because they don't want to rent out a dyno and potentially have issues. Nine times out of 10, a lot of you guys install Whipple kits at home, install TVS kits at home, and you do a real good job. A lot of the do-it-yourselfers are, you know, getting really prevalent down there. So they want to do all the data logging on the street. And to be honest, if you have enough street, if you have enough street, nice and flat, maybe Florida, in the southern states, things like that, you can pretty much get a 900 to 1,000 horsepower car dialed in good enough to go to the track and run badass numbers. The only reason you would need a dyno is to get power numbers and to dial in watt fueling under controlled conditions or you know something where you can control the environment not have to worry about tire spin getting a ticket things like that so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what that process is like when we send you a tune we basically say hey get us idle slow rev watt to 5,000 rpms send us the data log and then we're gonna repeat the process and bump up the limiter each time so that we can pretty much end up at a 7,500 rpm wide open throttle pull and we say dude timing's good uh, drivability seems to be on point according to you and fueling correction is on the money and we can send you on your way and you can go enjoy your vehicle so what I'm gonna do is with this 2019 supercharged Mustang that I just installed the Vortec on I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go through the process of what a remote dyno session is like and show you what we require of you in case you're a new customer I can probably send you this video as a reference and you can go oh okay that's what it required so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna record cold start just so that you know what a cold start log looks like now cold start in Florida is way different than cold start in Pennsylvania it is 90 degrees already at I don't know 9 30 9 30 a.m. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record cold start just so that you know you can see what it's like what to expect and you know in case there are any issues I can record them right here show you if the RPMs dip if they stumble because if someone sends a complaint in and says cold starts kind of jacked up Alex I go well uh, I have this calibration on car all of my sensors are working properly it's probably not the calibration and as you see cold start is on the money so we know cold start is not an issue on a 2019 Mustang with a Vortex supercharger on pump gas when it's hotter than 80 degrees outside. All right, let me go get some coffee and a bagel so I can start this. I'm old, I'm at that point where I need a coffee and a bagel to start my day. Then we'll do a remote dyno session with you guys. We'll do it all together and show you the process. What you notice right away, a couple of things is that it drives pretty much stock except you hear the, the blow off valve, if you want to call it that. Um, you just hear it a little bit, it's not that noisy. Sorry, I'm not trying to show off my guns, it just happens. Um, and there's a little bit more push, right? There's just a little tiny bit more push when you're driving. When you give it gas, you're like, oh, okay, there it is. Just like a, just a little more push, but not enough to make you go, ah, you know, it's not uncontrollable. It's actually pretty nice. You know, it's not, it's not abrupt, okay? Um, obviously, when you floor it, it does a bunch of nothing till about, I don't know, about uh, 5,500 RPMs, that's when it really starts to wake up. And that's when you really start to feel the push. But let me pull into this Dunkin' Donuts here so I can wake up and uh, start getting you guys, uh, you know, well-versed into how to, how to data log a supercharged vehicle when you do a remote dyno session. Okay, so the biggest thing people complain about on the remote dyno sessions is the slow revs. Let me start data logging. So the slow revs are something that people try to, I think they take the instructions a little too literal. They're like, I can't hold it exactly at 1500 RPM, Alex. Is something wrong? Am I doing something wrong? And I go, no, you're just simply overthinking it. So I'm gonna start data logging right now. And the nice thing about data logging with the Engage is you could just data log one gigantic log and send it to us without having to stress out you know oh i got a florida's gotta, home for new country i gotta split it into this log split it i gotta give you an idle log a slow rev log and a watt log no do it all in one log drive around this this thing records forever it's got four gigs of memory don't stress it okay real quick on the slow revs do them in gear do them in gear so 
how do you do that? So you gotta do 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, 4,500, and then we ask for a partial, partial wide open throttle lock. Good man, he moved out of the way. So let's do a 1,500, 2,500, 3,500, 45, 5,500, then a watt, okay? And then I'll show you what that looks like in gear, okay? So I'll put in first gear. We're gonna go to 1500 and keep it there. There it is. There's your 1500 RPM slow rev creep. 1500, then bump it up to 2500, then shift in the second, or you know, if it's an auto, select shift and go up to 3500. completed 15 25 35 45 55 in gear and you didn't have to stress out about holding it in gear each time the log is still rolling so i am not going to shut off the log i'm going to find a place to go wide open throttle from say 2500 rpm to 5500 rpm in let's say second gear because this is a long geared transmission and it has 373s in the back and i don't want to end up going a hundred and something mile an hour. I'm gonna keep it rolling and keep the data log rolling and then go do a wide open throttle and I'll get back with you once I start to do the wide open throttle log. Okay, found a nice clearing, still data logging, still got my coffee, so I gotta be careful. I gotta point point the uh, where you drink, point it forward, okay? Point it forward in case when you accelerate, it comes out the back. So, we're gonna do a second gear hit. That was your red magic still works, by the way. Second gear hit from three to 5,000 RPM. Perfect, right at three. Go wide open throttle. Okay, 5,500, let off, stop the log. That's how I'm gonna do it. Now let me pull over, show you what I see in the data log. Sorry about the glare, but let's go uh, open up a data log. Uh, and that, that was the data log, basically it's an idle slow rev and we're gonna go it went watt to about 5,500 RPM. So let's see what it looks like on our end. Beautiful, as you've seen many times before, we max it out here. Boop. We go down here to this little red guy, Boop. and it only highlights one PID, which is RPM. Okay, there it is. There's my semi-step log, okay? Uh, there's a slow rev creep and a semi-step log. Now, yours might look a little different depending on how stable your foot is, but <clears throat> what I'm gonna just keep an eye, close eye on is fueling correction on acceleration, okay? So, short-term fuel trims. Pretty much plus minus 5%, kind of where you want them, you know? Plus minus short-term fuel trim right here plus minus five percent there's a bit of a lean spike and i think that was because i was on and off of the uh the gas so i'll take my next set of logs to be a little better but right here when my foot started to get a little calmer then all of a sudden short-term fuel trims were only correcting about five percent so let's go all the way over and see where the wide open throttle will happen which is over here right click drag it over drag it over and it'll zoom in. There's my wide open throttle pull. Look at how tight short term fuel trim is. Let's bring the mouse to the beginning of that pull. Short term fuel trim, and then we scroll to the right. That is, that is so much money. It's 3%. Beautiful, and timing. Let's see what spark was, 16 and a half degrees. Knock sensors negative the whole pull. The knock sensors never went positive because the max value, max value, knock sensor, is zero so it never went above that okay now if i see this log when you send it to me i say dude we're ready fueling corrections where it needs to be get me a wide open throttle pull from 3000 to 7000 rpms preferably in a taller gear say third gear so that's next let's do that found a clearing here in way 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 over mexico so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go up to third gear start a log come on yeah it's being an asshole Let's reset the end gauge to make sure everything's kosher. If you have issues with the end gauge, just reboot it. It's no different than a computer. Um, so again, I'm just gonna wait for the data logging screen to come up. Diagnostics, data logging, 19 manual, normal mode. A lot of you guys, what well, do you do? Normal mode or race mode? It's normal mode. 
relax. Let's get going. Then we're gonna bring it up to third gear. Logging. Second, third. So we're gonna start from 3,000 RPMs, and I'm gonna make sure I monitor knock as I'm wide open throttle. If it goes positive, I'll let off. Put the window down so you can hear it. It might buff it a little bit, so sorry. Here we go. Okay, so the previous log was log 57 so now let's look for log 58 which was the wide open throttle pull to um oh come on alex where are you did the sd card go in or no come on baby oh, yeah 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 and it's gonna try to open so that logs and it's gonna be it's gonna be 58 okay so got a log 58 Let's look for a wide open throttle pull. Again, if you guys know the deal, I've shown you this a million times, how to look at a log real quick. And there it is, and pedal, boom, throttle, boom, meaning I didn't have traction control come on, boom, let's look at short term fuel trims through the whole pull, boom, pretty damn steady, you know, it's not jumpy. <clears throat> on the hit, it's a little on the lean side, which is like 3%, and then the rest of the pull is 0 0.97, 0 0.98, 0 0.95, just so you don't think I'm lying. It's dead nuts. What's knock looking like? Negative 195. Let me keep scrolling because I think at the end of the pull, it pulled back some timing. Let me see. No, dude. Knock sensors added in the whole time. So when you graph knock sensor, it starts uh, it, on the hit. Boom. We saw a little knock. We saw one degree of knock, <laughs> which I'm not even concerned about because that's just the rattling of the engine and centrifugal setup on the hit. Then it just added, 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 added the rest of the pull. Now, if I'm looking at a data log like this on my end, I tell the guy, dude, the thing is legit. You can just enjoy that thing. 7,100 RPM. Timing's at almost 18 degrees. Load is very tame. Load is only 1.3. That means this car is maybe making, fuck, it, maybe nine pounds of boost. If that, it's a 3.6 pulley, so it's quote unquote pulleyed for 10. But at 7,500 RPM, it might generate 1.4 load. But I'm telling you, this is, this feels really good. Now, one more test, because we're basically done with this car. It is fueling beautifully. The limiter is set at 7750. I'm happy. But the biggest issue centrifugal superchargers have is the two, three, or the one, two shift. On a shift, the knock sensors tend to spike up. And my theory is that it's doing that because of the the way the centrifugal is mounted, the way, you know, Pro Charger, Paxton, Vortec, it doesn't matter which one. When you do a one-two shift and you kind of rattle everything because you basically have a piece of metal overhanging the engine bay via brackets, I just think it's a little rattly. So the last test I'm gonna do is do a one-two, two-three, not a three-four. And I'm not gonna shift it quickly. I'm just, I'm not gonna shift it, you know, power shift it. I'm gonna shift it fast and we'll see what the knock sensor does and then we will be done because what I tell people is, okay, go out there and give me a one, two, three or a two, three, four. Look at the log, make sure it's happy and then I send them on the way and tell them to enjoy the vehicle. Okay, the last time I did this where I videoed myself shifting, yeah, you know what happened. <laughs> I broke shift. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a two, three. I don't know if I'm gonna do a three, four. Um, I might be able to just do a one, two, three and log it real quick because I, I don't think I need to bring it out to see that if on a shift things rattle enough to uh, to cause an issue and cause the knock sensors to go off. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the log, normal mode, and do a one, two, two, three maybe. See how the knock sensors act because you saw they were negative the whole time except on the hit. So we'll see how all that goes. I'm in Mexico somewhere, way out of the way. And uh, let's get this going. Sorry, I feel like I have to talk, but sometimes shutting up works. Window down. <clears throat> Please don't break transmission. Poor car. Here we go. <laughs> Third gear. Third gear. 
6,000 RPMs and up, that that speedo goes whoop like it's it really starts to sing. One two, they didn't blaze the tires, but as you heard, it was enough to break them loose and be on the verge of traction. So maybe another pulley size down would be just right with a sticky set of tires. But these are the bone stock uh, Michelin, so that's enough talking. Let's take a look at the log and see what we see. Football shit. Previous log was 58. Let's look for 59. Hope it reads the SD card. Okay, good, it does. 59. Remember, that was a 1, 2, 3 shift. So we're going to look at the knock sensor. Remember, this car's on pump gas, a 93 shell pump gas. And, um, you know, if it can do it in Florida pump gas, you know, seems to be that other uh, states have a little bit better pump gas than Florida. Unless, that's RPM, obviously. Obviously, I, I wasn't quick shifting it. I really don't want to break this transmission. And we'll see what knock did or does. Aha! On the 1-2 shift, it went up to 2 degrees. That's why second didn't feel spectacular, right? So, on the 1-2, uh, again right when I let off and come back on. So let's see pedal. Pedal. Right. It, almost exactly when I get back on the gas. So I think it has something to do with the initial, the initial stab of the throttle versus the, you know, I, it could be something silly. So the nice thing is, that's why we log. So what I want to do is I want to refine this tune with Junior so much so that you guys, you know, have no issue. Now, in third gear, this thing just ate it. You know, it's just like, bah, and it added timing back in. That's why that third gear pull felt so amazing. And the one, two shift didn't. I'm happy that on the two, three shift, it didn't rattle anything. But on the one, two, for whatever reason, it, the knock sensors are being active. So we're gonna just log it and see what the deal is. I'm not looking to fix it right now, but I wanted to show you what we ask for, what we do, how it looks like on our end, and centrifugal stick, guys, this is a thing. We're trying to fix it to see if it's actual knock or if it's just the nature of the, the way the centrifugal is mounted in the car, which is causing a bunch of rattling on the accessory drive and potentially setting off the knock sensors. Nine times out of 10, I tell people, dude, Seems good. Send it. We'll uh, keep an eye on that guy. Make sure nothing's rubbing on the body. No, no charge pipes are rubbing. And we tell you to enjoy the car. So now I'm going to do exactly what I tell customers to do when we're done data logging. Uh, and we are sure that fueling is on the money, sparks on the money. Maybe you got some false knock, but that's on you to figure out. And uh, just enjoy the vehicle and shut, shut my mouth. Feels good. 
it, it's not as fun as a TBS where you're just like, oh, right on the hit. But for a daily, it's going to be pretty good. And you got to understand, if you're going to race somebody, make sure that you're above 5,500 RPM in that gear. If not, someone's probably going to block you. So be mindful of that. All right. Let's end the video there. It's been a great little process showing you how a remote dyno session works. Sorry for this glare right here. I don't know what that is. Hopefully that doesn't matter. But now you know what to expect and what we see in a remote dyno session. So at least it's familiar to you guys. And I can send you this video as an example to what to do, what to expect from us. And if you take one day off after you've built your car and data log, I'm telling you, we will be done in two to three revisions as long as there are no mechanical or fuel delivery issues. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you later. See you out there.